Good morning, April. Good morning. I'm uh, sorry I slept so late. Well, let me get you some breakfast. Oh, no, no, no. Don't be silly. Oh. You and Mike have to get to work. I'll, I'll fix myself something later. Well, would, would you like some coffee? I'd love some. Thanks. <laughs> Help me pry my eyes open. Oh, didn't you sleep too well? Oh, I slept like a log, but that started about 5 a.m. Well, then why don't you go back to bed? No, because all the things I want to get done, I am going to do today, including if you can possibly fit me into your schedule sometime this afternoon, I would love to come down to your office and discuss the estate. Well, as it turns out, one of my clients has canceled an appointment, so I will have time. And there is uh, something I want to talk over with you uh, concerning Elliot Dorn. Elliot Dorn? Yes. There's something you have to know, April. I've got that. Hi, Miss. Well, Clark. Raven, hello. Is it April here? Uh, yes. <sighs> Hi, April. Please don't be mad at me. I know I shouldn't have just barged over, but I just had to see you. I was so worried that if I called you, you wouldn't be in the mood to see me, and I've been thinking about what happened, and I wanted to know how you were. Well, as you can see, I'm doing quite well. It's very nice of you two to invite April over here to stay. Well, we feel very close to her, and we're just glad that she wants to stay. Raven, April uh, didn't sleep too well last night, and she was thinking about going back to bed. Oh, well, not now. I just got here. Uh, well, no, not now. Well, I don't mean to be in the way. I won't take very long, just long enough to have a cup of coffee. Oh, would you like one? If it wouldn't be too much trouble? No, no, not at all. Uh, Mike, I know that you and Nancy have to get to work, and uh, I wouldn't worry about being polite. I'm sure Raven will understand. Oh, yes, I, I will understand. I actually came over because I knew you two had to go to your jobs, and I thought maybe you wouldn't want to be alone. Actually, that's one of the reasons why I thought this would be a good place for me to stay, just so I could be alone. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. Uh, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I wondered if perhaps you might want to stay with me since I'll be around all the time and uh, well, you're more than welcome. Thank you, Raven, but I'm really quite comfortable. See, I have this residential hotel suite and I really don't have anything to do. So I could be your nurse and your companion and friend. April is going to stay with us, Raven, at least until the baby's healthy enough to leave the hospital. And Nancy, I think... Um, Maybe we should leave. Um, yes, that's right. It is getting a little late. We do have to go down. I'll um, talk to you later. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. It's been lovely to see you again. Oh, it's nice very seeing nice you. To see you. Uh, Mike, I'll see you this afternoon then? Yes, I'll call and let you know exactly when. Fine. April, do try to get some rest, huh? Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. There goes my promise to Dre. Well, we can't force her to stay away. I'm afraid we can't. I just hope that April is. Well, she's got enough common sense to take care of herself. Raven seemed rather subdued, didn't you think? Or do you think it was another pose? Well, from everything I've heard, that young woman's whole life has been one pose after another. It's um, a very cozy house. It's probably why you feel at home. It's not the house, Raven. It's the people who live here. You were staying with your brother and sister-in-law before, right? Yeah, but just for a short while. Uh, their household is a bit more complicated than this one with the baby and the hours they keep. I just thought I'd be, well, less in the way here. April, I'm sure you weren't in the way. And my offer still stands. If you want to come over to my place, I'd be more than happy no, to have... No, thank you very much, but I'll be just fine here. Besides, it won't be long now, and Julie will be able to leave the hospital soon. Where are you going to go then? Home, of course, to Oakdale. You're going to go back there without Drape? sorry. Yes, Raven, I will be going home without Draper. I don't know what's the matter with me. I say things I don't mean. I do things that are awful, like coming over here where I'm not wanted. I'm sorry. I, uh, I did not mean to make you feel unwelcome. That's all right. I figured you were sick and tired of people coming over here with their condolences and 
having to listen over and over again about your great losses. You're absolutely right. I do hate sympathy calls. Well, I'm sorry, but this is a sympathy call. The only thing is, April, I'm the one who wants the sympathy. I have been desperate to talk to somebody. Somebody who understands how I feel. And um, you've been very tolerant of me in the past. And you have a baby now also. Well, I don't really have a baby, uh, Raven. I, I've just happened to have given birth to one. But the second that you gave birth to him, you, you loved him. He happens to be a she. And yes, I do love Julia. She's terribly important to me, and that's only natural. Well, then isn't it only natural that Jamie is very important to me? He means everything to me. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about the day I came into your place and gave you Jamie to care for for a little while. Oh, come on, Raven. That... You've got to be kidding. You didn't give Jamie to us for a little while. You just gave him to us for good. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. It was like that exactly. Don't you remember that little piece of paper you gave us? That little authorization of yours that we could raise Jamie as our own, even adopt him if we wanted to. That was just me saying crazy things again. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to give Jamie away. I, I was very upset. Logan had just thrown me out of the house for no reason for at absolutely all. absolutely no reason. You think I'm terrible, don't you? You think I'm terrible? Well, I guess you have every reason to. And I'm sure you couldn't possibly believe that I've changed and that I see things a little bit differently now. Okay, you make me understand, Raven. You tell me how you can give your baby away one minute and then want it back so desperately the next. Because I've been without him, that's why. I cried every night in London. And that's why I came back here, because I want my baby. I have been in this city a month, and I have talked to every lawyer in this town, and no one will help me, because they're afraid to tackle Logan, because he's the district attorney. Logan loves that baby. He loves Jamie, and he takes wonderful care of him. He pays people to take wonderful care of him. Is that the way to raise a baby? You know it isn't. A baby should have his mother. And I miss my baby. Is it true you tried to steal, Jamie? Yes. And I'll do it again. He won't even let me see him, April. Please, I don't know what to do. I, I need some help. Well, well, I certainly don't know what you should do. Well, you could talk to him. It's not right of him to use his legal power. I mean, I, I'm helpless. I know I did wrong. But should I be punished like this? Well, I guess I could talk to Logan. We're friends. Oh, you are? Even after what he did to Draper? <sighs> I'm sorry. God. I'm sorry. I know you've forgiven Logan. Even after everything that's happened, I still love Logan. And even if everything doesn't work out with the two of us, I want my baby back. Look, Raven, I can talk to Logan, but that's... that's all I can do. I'm... I didn't mean to give Jamie away. You know that paper that I gave you that says that you have the right to adopt yeah. Jamie? Do you still have that? I don't know, I suppose so. The house... I can't stay on long because I'm at a payphone and I don't have any change. Where are you calling from? The lobby at Geraldine's hotel. Uh, what are you doing there? Picking up one small boy from room 12B? I am going to get my son. What plan have you devised this time to arrest poor Jamie from his playpen? Well, I'm just going to go up there, ring the doorbell and see who answers. There's really nothing illegal about that. You think that's going to get you into the apartment, huh? I'm just going to see who answers and then we'll take it from there. Okay. That won't take you long. So I'll meet you back at your place in, say, uh, about an hour? Elliot, I've already told you I'm busy. I have an engagement. 
Or change your plans. I got something to celebrate, and I want to share it with you. Ah, uh, well, we'll do it later. I I'm sorry, the elevator's here. Bye-bye. Raven! Oh. It is a big bottle. Maybe I'll just uh, surprise her anyway. Detective Stoner, I must say, I'm a little surprised. <laughs> that uh, makes two of us. Is there anything I can do for you, Mrs. Swift? Yes. I heard that Logan hired a new babysitter, and I wanted to come over to see who it is that he entrusted with the care of my son. So may I come in? <sighs> All right. Where is she? Uh, Jamie's babysitter's not a she. It's a he. Well, then where is he? You are speaking to him. You're kidding. Well, I assume that you were here to help in some way. <sighs> this is insane. Is Logan out of his mind? How dare he entrust the care of my child with a police officer? He uh, could have done a lot worse. Well, does he think that a police officer can take care of Jamie better than his own mother? Raven, the only reason I am here is because Logan thinks that you pose a very real threat to Jamie's well-being. Well, that's just a matter of opinion now, isn't it? Well, you can't deny that you tried to steal the boy, can you? I thought that Jamie belonged with his mother, and I still believe that. I have every right to that boy, you know. Well, uh... I'm afraid until the courts decide that, that Jamie is going to stay right where he is. Hmm. Well, we'll just see what the courts decide. Because Logan has now given me an airtight case against him. Hiring cops instead of a babysitter. Come on, there's not a judge in the country who wouldn't see that this is a, a totally irresponsible action. Well, we're just going to have to wait and see about that now, aren't we? I shudder to think of, of how this child has been cared for. What does a man know about taking care of a baby? Look, I happen to think that Logan has been doing a very good job of taking care of his son. And Steve said that everything went as smooth as Wait a, a baby's bottom this morning. Steve Guthrie? Yeah, that's right. How did Steve Guthrie amuse himself with Jamie? Did they have a beer drinking contest? Look, your son is being taken care of very well. He's getting the best possible care. I mean, we're all taking this job pretty seriously. The next thing you're going to tell me is that Deborah Saxon is in on the swing shift. Uh, as a matter of fact, Deborah was here, yes. <clears throat> what did he do? Hire the entire police force to take care of my look, baby? Look, Mrs. Swift. I think it would really be best all around if you just left now. There isn't anything else you can accomplish by being here. I want to see my baby. Shh. A little less noise out here. Jamie just fell asleep. Who are you? This is my wife. This is Star. I thought it best if I sort of break into this job gradually, so I called in a little expert advice. Calvin wasn't that comfortable about giving Jamie his bath, so I did it. You know, he really enjoyed it, too. Do you have any experience taking care of babies? As a matter of fact, I have. I've raised two younger brothers. Anything else? Two complete strangers taking care of my son. I don't like this one bit. Not one little bit. So that's Jamie's mommy. No wonder Logan wants him to steer clear of her. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid we are. Uh... Foiled her plans, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. Got some bad vibes from that lady. It's one troublesome woman. You know, I have a feeling I better call Geraldine and tell her that uh, Raven flew in to see us. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Uh, this is Calvin Stoner. I'm at your apartment with Jamie. Oh, and how's Jamie, Calvin? Oh, he's just fine. He's sleeping right now. But we just had a visitor, and I thought you ought to know about it. 
Do you mean to say that Raven was there? Yes. She said she came to see who Jamie's new baby nurse was, but I don't think she was too pleased with Logan's choice. Well, now that Raven knows the police are involved, maybe she'll leave that child alone. I hope. In any case, Calvin, thank you very much for calling. Certainly. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Am I too early? You're not supposed to be here at all. Will you please leave? I'm jealous, Raven. Look at the way you set the table. You never do that when we dine together. But then, we usually dine in bed, don't we? Elliot, would you please give me back my key? I have to see you tonight. I have things to do. I came all the way over here to share the good news with you, and this is how you receive me. I'm terribly hurt. Well, I don't care if you leave angry. I just want you to leave. I want to celebrate. Well, great. You just tell me what the wonderful news is. Congratulations. I wish you all the luck in the world and get out. You'll be pleased to find out that I'm not a pauper anymore. I have found very gainful employment. I'm very happy for you. Do you remember a club called the Unicorn? You got a job as a waiter. How nice. Why don't you fix me a drink? It appears that when Margot decided to take the club away from me, she forgot to sign the papers legally. So what does that mean? It means that you are looking at the former and future owner of the unicorn. Well, that's wonderful. I'm very happy for you. That gives you something to do tonight. Why don't you go over there and play Big Honcho Nightclub Owner? It's one of your favorite roles, isn't it? I was hoping you could join me tonight. You know, I was wondering whether the sofa in the back room is still as comfortable as it was. Not tonight, lover boy. You know, I need your support, uh, Raven. Um, April is not very happy with the situation. Well, I don't see why it should matter to her. I mean, even if she does without that seedy nightclub, she's still a very wealthy woman. It is not a seedy nightclub. Anyway, I, uh... I wouldn't be surprised if she took me to court on it. If April wants that club back, you give it to her. Have you been drinking? No. She's been through a lot lately. And I don't want to see her upset over some silly little court action. Some si are you siding with April against me? April is my best friend. Since when? Since always. Look, I know why you like the Widow Scott all of a sudden. You want April on your side because her testimony can hurt or help your chances of getting Jamie back. That has nothing to do with it? Oh, it hasn't, huh? Lately, you uh, have shown concern only for people who could help you gain custody. You think what you like. I don't really care. Tell me something, Raven. Exactly what do you have planned for Chief Mallory tonight? The moment I told you I would no longer help you snatch Jamie, I became expendable. Chief Mallory is my replacement. Chief Mallory is a very attractive man. Isn't that enough? Not for you. You want to use him. <laughs> yes, I do think that he might be able to do something. You would play up to the room service waiter of this hotel if he could get you into their nursery. Nursery. Oh, do you know what they've done? He's had the entire place surrounded by cops. <laughs> what? The new babysitters are Calvin Stoner, Steve Guthrie, and Deborah Saxon. <laughs> That's not funny. That whole place looks like an armed camp. Well, Raven, looks like you're going to have your job cut out for you. Yes. Seems as if this is no longer a one-woman job. Oh, I see. So that is why you enlisted Chief Mallory as a tactical advisor? Yes. I might have to ask the Chief for some help, since you've obviously chickened out. Oh, but would you just tell me something, Raven? Seeing that the good Chief is on the side of law and order, 
Do you really think that he would assist you in this nefarious plot of yours? Oh, Derek will help me. How? I know exactly how. You wouldn't believe it. Logan has that place surrounded by cops. What? Yes. The new babysitters are Calvin Stoner, Steve Guthrie, and Deborah uh, Sachs. <laughs> it's not funny. That entire place looks like an armed camp. Well, Raven, sounds like you're going to have your work cut out for you. Well, this is no longer going to be a one-woman job. I see. So that is why you had decided to enlist the aid of uh, Chief Mallory as... Um... Tactical advisor? Yes. I might have to enlist the chief for help since you've obviously chickened out. But just tell me something, Raven. Seeing that the good chief is on the side of law and order, how do you think he's going to assist you in this nefarious plot of yours? Oh, Derek will help me. How? I know exactly how. <laughs> oh, then I'll have to stick around to see what you have up your sleeve. No, you won't. You're going to be gone by the time he gets here. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I don't mind if he's in my celebration. Oh. That is why I came over here, you know. To celebrate my triumphant return to the unicorn. Elliot, you cannot use that bottle. They gave me that for my dinner party. Oh, no, no, darling. I brought this over for us. Oh, you bought it. It'll be the first time you ever bought anything. And besides, I think it was an accident you got the unicorn. Margot did not want you to have that club. She didn't want you to have anything. That club was my gift. My wife was not an Indian giver. Well, why don't you just take your champagne and get out... Sounds like it's a bit too late, huh? Oh, I'm gonna enjoy seeing you handle this, my love. Hey, Derek, Hi. right on time. A chief, you do know, Mr. Dorn. Of course, we met on several occasions. Let's see, the last time was it, uh... Nola Madison's house, wasn't it? Ah, oh, yes, yes. Very unfortunate circumstances. Poor Nola. I, I hear that she has been confined to a mental institution. Terrible, terrible tragedy. Mm. Uh, thank you for bringing this. Sure. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, thank you. We've got another terrible tragedy. I'm afraid my dinner party has been decimated. I had planned on six people, and then one couple called, and they canceled, and then Elliot just came over and said that his girlfriend came down with a flu. Oh, well, that's too bad. Yes, it is. But he did bring a bottle of champagne as an apology. Thank you. Oh, I see. That's very nice. Well, I don't see why a dinner party can't be for three people. Yes, as uh, I was just saying before Elliot you... Elliot was just saying that it's much better if it's a twosome. I tried to coax him into staying, but he refused. Well, maybe if you coaxed me just a little bit harder... I... Oh, no, no. I think you're absolutely right. As much as I would love to share the company of two very handsome gentlemen, I think this is better. And besides, what would Charlotte say? Charlotte? Yes. Charlotte is Elliot's girlfriend. He was supposed to come here with her tonight, but uh, she couldn't make it. He's mad about her, you know, but she's very jealous. Oh, yes. Uh, jealousy is a very dangerous emotion, Chief. I've had a little experience with it myself. Yes, anyway, things turned out for the best because he has someplace very important to go tonight. Really? Where? The Unicorn. It's a beautiful supper club. Do you know where it is? No, I don't. But I must admit I'm not very familiar with Monticello's nightlife yet. Elliot used to run it himself, but now it seems he's come into full ownership. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, congratulations. Oh, yes. My wife uh, left me this club as a small token of affection. I haven't seen it in months, so I have no idea what state it is in. Well, who's been running it? She left it in the hands of the employees. Not a good thing, in my opinion. Well, I'm sure that you'll just fix it all up, and then we can all go as a foursome. You and I, and you and Charlotte. Yes, if she ever gets over the flu. She sounded very bad over the phone, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it changed into pneumonia, followed by instant death. Oh, Elliot, come on. You know how I hate sick humor. Really? Well, uh, you two have a very pleasant evening. Thank you. Good luck with your club. Thank you. You'll enjoy the food anyway. It comes from the hotel kitchen. Oh, Elliot, get out of here. <laughs> Bye. Uh, give my love to Charlotte. Well, alone at last. Oh, not by our choice, however. I hope you're not disappointed. Here I'd planned a dinner party, and now you only get me. <laughs> Actually, it's better, though, because we can get to know each other now. Yes. Um, why don't we start with a toast? There's only one champagne glass. Well, I guess we will just have to drink out of the same glass. Thank you. Give leisure. 
Uh, apples and cheese, I love them. So how you doing? Oh, there's not much new in my life. What about you? No. Yeah. Oh, listen, have you thought anything more about what we were talking about you know, the other day? I mean, Raven's recently discovered maternal instincts. Come on now, Logan. I don't want you to get the impression that I'm taking sides. It's the last thing in the world I intend on no, doing. Of course not, of course not. I don't want to put you in the middle of a slugfest either. Okay? Well, I certainly hope it doesn't come to that. I don't think it will. If Raven has any common sense at all, she's got to realize that uh, she's not going to win this one in court, not after everything that's happened. Oh, well. All right. Look, you know more about all this than I do. Oh, you know as much as I do. You and Draper were prime witnesses to her irresponsibility. No, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I'm not going to ask you to be a witness in court, okay? Probably won't even come to a custody battle, huh? That's long as long as I hold on to custody of Jamie anyway, and I fully intend to do that. I got some help now. I'm... Oh, you don't know this, do you? What? I have got Deborah, Steve, and Calvin Stoner babysitting for me. Are you kidding? No, I do. I know it can't go on forever, but they promised to set me up with this woman, a, an ex-cop and a grandmother who's going to look after him. Sounds perfect. I don't know, Logan. It, it sounds kind of bitter to me. I, I think that's what's bothering me, the thought of... Jamie growing up in an atmosphere like that. Well, I'm not crazy about the idea, but what other choice do I have, huh? I mean, I can hope that Raven will behave like a reasonable person. I can hope for world peace, a 1% inflation rate, a visit from Would the Easter Bunny. Would you come on now? You can't take such a negative attitude towards this. You have got to try to be positive about it. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take your suggestion. I'll call Raven. See if we can sit down and discuss this whole thing like a couple of sensible people. Well, good. I'm glad. If not for your sake, for Jamie's. But I have to tell you right up front, I don't hold out much hope for the outcome of this whole thing. I have something I have to ask you. What? Now, you remember the night that Raven left Jamie with you when she head out, headed off to London? Of course I do. She also left you a letter. You showed it to me at the time. Gave you complete authority to raise Jamie any way that you saw fit. Yes, there was a letter. You still have it? I mean, you didn't get rid of it or anything, did you? <sighs> I didn't destroy it, if that's what you mean. It's up at the house in Oakdale somewhere. You think you could find it? Of course I... <sighs> Logan Raven asked me about that letter, too. She did? Yes. Well, I'm not surprised. She'd have to be a fool not to realize how important it is. If it comes to a custody battle, if, if, I said if it comes to a custody battle, that letter will be Exhibit A. Yeah, I, I guess it uh, makes it appear as if Raven meant to leave Jamie behind her for Makes good. it appear? That's exactly what she meant to do. That's concrete evidence that she cannot deny of how little she cares for her son. Look, all I know is that Raven told me she didn't mean to write it, that's all. She meant it. She meant it. Why else would she bother to put it in black I and don't white? Know. That letter, all by itself, even if you never testified in court, that letter would keep Raven from ever getting her hands on Jamie again. That's why it's so important. I see that. I know I can trust you not to give it to Raven, but I'd like to ask you not even to let her see it, not to show it to her. I don't want her to get her hands on it. I'm just afraid it would become confetti. Anyway, my mother is an American. Her husband is British, and he's my stepfather. And you want to know something funny? What? I dated him before she did. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I met him at a party in New York, and... Uh, we were a very hot number for a while. But then Mother met him, and she had an advantage because she was disgustingly rich. Which brings us to the next question you were going to ask me. Oh? What's that? How I managed to support myself, since I'm obviously not a working woman. Oh, I would never ask a woman where she gets her money from. <laughs> I just assumed you had independent means. Oh, I'm independent, but my means, well, they're not so good. Mother sends me a check every month. But we had a fight when I was in London, and uh, I don't know how much longer they're going to last. I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll have to find a rich lover, I guess. <laughs> do I shock you? 
Raven, I don't know you well enough to be shocked by you. Derek, I'm sure you have an opinion of me. Logan is your friend. Yes, Logan's a very good friend, but he doesn't talk about you. He doesn't? How dare he not bring me up in his conversation? Oh, no, no, he's mentioned you, of course, on several occasions. You know Logan, he's very much a gentleman. Don't let him fool you. How could a gentleman possibly treat his wife the way he's treated me? I swore I would not bring up my marriage tonight. There really is no marriage. I know that. Frankly, I wouldn't be here if there was. Logan doesn't mean a thing to me, you know. I'm free. I do what I want. I go where I want. I see who I want. <laughs> it's just wonderful. I feel so completely, absolutely free. Well, I'm completely free myself, but I'm not sure it's very wonderful. It's not wonderful. It's terrible. It's the worst thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I try to show everyone that I'm happy, but I'm not. Oh, Derek. I'm so lonely. <laughs> I just want someone to hold me. Would you just hold me? Is good. Oh, yeah. Telephone. <laughs> well, just let it ring. No, it might be for me. You told somebody you were here? Oh, come on. I have to let people know where I am. I'm chief of police, Raven. <sighs> Raven, I answer the phone. All right, all right. Well, there's no phone in the bedroom, and I had to come all the way into the living room. I hope that's your idea of humor. I have to go. Listen, don't hang up on me, damn it. I was calling to find out how the party is going. Oh, it's going very well. So how are you doing? Rotten, thank you very much. I'm at the Unicorn in my old office. You do remember the old office. It's just as shabby as the rest of the place. And the shabbiest thing about it all is the profit and loss statement. Or should I say the loss statement? Well, look, Charlotte, I'm glad that you're feeling better, but I do have company. You know, Charlotte, that was very cute telling your friend Derek Mallory about my poor, sick girlfriend. Now, listen, Raven, that's the last time you're going to play a trick like that on me. Charlotte, I have to go. <laughs> Wait a second. If you think that your chief Mallory's going to help you with a little problem, you're welcome to him. But that's the last you're going to see of me. Is that clear? Don't be so definite. Nothing is definite in this world. I still want your friendship. Well, then prove it. All right, look. We'll get together for dinner tomorrow night, just the two of us, and we'll have a very nice little talk, okay? Oh, all right. I'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30. Good night. That was Charlotte, <laughs> Elliot's girlfriend. She's feeling a lot better, and she wanted to have a little talk, probably about Elliot. Now, where were we? No, I have got to get going. You will do no such thing. Oh, no, it's late. No, no, no. We're supposed to be discovering each other, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Raven, hmm? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, then I'll show you how. 